October 9th, John Peters. Amassing wealth can enslave a man, but using wealth based on God's principles can give purpose to a man's life. At 28, John had a high finance job, a midtown Manhattan apartment, and a family complete with a nanny. But when he and his wife were expecting their third child, John was working 70-hour weeks. Each time John left for a business trip, their son began to stutter. John loved his family and wanted more family time. So they moved out of the city and bought a growing equipment rental company. John could grow a business and build a family life. He was capable, smart, and determined. But while John sometimes prayed and his family did attend church, he never invited God into his business plan. A year and a half later, with an expanding company in need of ongoing investment, John cashed out his retirement and home equity and was in debt more than a million dollars. Three months behind on his mortgage payment, he had little income. Since John managed the household finances, he did not tell his wife. He shielded her to protect her. He would carry the stress alone. He was in control. One Wednesday night during a church service, a visiting missionary told how he had struggled, especially when money was tight, to give tithes and offerings to God. But he gave, and God consistently provided for his needs. Everything belonged to God, and money given for God's purposes made a difference in the world. John had been raised to give a portion of his income to God, but he had not tithed in years. Money was a mirror for what was going on in my heart, John said. In my pride, I wanted to be more successful because of me. His finances reflected his need for control. On Thursday, while John was at work, his pregnant wife phoned. She was crying. While grocery shopping with the three children, all four of her credit cards were declined. John reeled. He had told himself everything was okay. They were building equity. He could handle it. But now, the person he loved most could not even buy groceries. John was out of options. On Friday, John prayed, I've been trying to do this myself. I thought I was smart enough, but I give up. In his wallet was $300 for car insurance. If he had been tithing, it was about the amount John would have given that month. John decided to give it to God. I'm going to let you figure this out, he prayed. On Sunday, John gave all his cash. It was his way of saying God was in charge. On Monday morning, a man who had found John's company on the internet contacted him. When a deal had fallen through, the man was stuck with a thousand units of used specialty equipment. Desperate to sell, the man offered them at a low price. John, who had always bought new, usually paid 10 times the amount. He had no idea this small niche existed. God had brought an opportunity that changed everything. Excited, John borrowed the money from his parents and purchased the equipment. In that market, his company became almost the only buyer of used equipment and he never bought new again. Though the company's rental revenue per unit remained about the same, costs decreased by 92%. So as John's business grew, his finances quickly recovered. 16 years later, when the business sold for a significant profit, it had locations in 21 US cities. Sales had increased by 27 times. John had not created wealth on his own. God had given him great opportunities. God tells us in Luke 12, 48, for everyone to whom much is given, from him much will be required. Financial obedience to God became his heartbeat. His family enjoyed wealth, and the wealth allowed them to give much. After the family spent three weeks with missionaries in the Philippines, they embraced a specific purpose, to equip and encourage 
missionaries. When John started his first business, he had worked for his own glory. But now, he says, God gets the glory because without him, we would have failed. If you hold a mirror to your finances, what do you see? Do you trust God with your finances or are you in control? Today, what would it take for you to trust God and give him control of your finances? Amassing wealth can enslave a man, but using wealth based on God's principles can give purpose to a man's life. Amassing a lot of wealth can enslave a man. I don't know about you, but I don't like that idea of being enslaved. But I do like the idea of amassing a lot of wealth. Hey, 365 Christian men, my name is Mike Mott. Today is October 9th, and I'm coming to you from Jerusalem. See, God's principles for our finances, this is a big one for us, and lots of us stumble and trip up here. We see this in the story of John Peter today. It took him a while to understand God's principles. The real question is, why do we want to amass a lot of wealth? For most men, amassing lots of money has nothing to do with having lots of money. The, the real reason behind it for most of us is that we want to be in control. We want to be able to provide for ourselves, for our families. We want to make sure all of our bases are covered and that everything's going to work out, that we're going to have the things that we want and the things that we need, and that we're going to have comfort. This is the real reason behind amassing a lot of wealth. But God's Word gives us a completely different picture the book of Hebrews, it tells us to keep ourselves free from the love of money, to be content with what we have. It doesn't tell us to keep ourselves free from money, but from the love of money, that desire to amass it and to build it up. And then God goes on to say there, because I, the Lord your God, will never leave you and I'll never forsake you. God, our Father, wants us to understand that He will provide for us, that He will cover all of our bases, that He will give us everything that we need, and lots of times gives us the things that we want as well. John, uh, uh, we see this in the book of John as well, where Jesus says, look at the flowers of the field and, and how well God takes care of them. If God takes such good care of these flowers, which are here today and then they're gone tomorrow, how much more is He going to take care of you, the ones that He loves, the ones that He's created? And, and this is God's heart behind his principles of finances. He doesn't care about our finances. He does care about our hearts. So when we give God our finances, we're giving him our hearts. It's a simple principle, but it's a hard one to learn. And so my challenge to us today, guys, are you willing to give God your finances? Give him your tithes. Open your pocketbook to help other people. Trust him to cover all of the bases he will do it. There's no one that can provide like God. That's our challenge today, guys. Have a great day.